Yo, my peoples, what's up? My name is Jason, and I'm from the Shelf Stories YouTube channel. And I'm here in the Dice Tower today to review an oldie, but I think goodie. Not alone with the Exploration Expansion. This is a game for two to seven players. It is a one verse mini game. One player will be playing a really nasty, huge alien, and all the other players are survivors on an alien planet trying desperately to get out. Let me go ahead and show you both the base game and the expansion at the table, and I'll tell you what I think. So without further ado, let's go to the videotape for Not Alone and the Exploration Expansion. Welcome to the world of Artemia of a game of Not Alone. The central area, these 10 cards represent the terrain, the 10 spaces that you can go in this world. So I have a three player game laid out. I have two explorers. This is the 27th century. These explorers are out. They've heard about Artemia, the planet that is depicted on this little board over here, but they crash landed. They don't wanna be there anymore <laughs> and they're trying to get out. So the third and final player, the, the one and the one verse many, is the hunter. The hunter is an alien creature that is going to be hunting the, all the other players who are trying to work cooperatively to escape. The success of the hunter or the success of the hunted, the explorers, are tracked on this board over here abstractly. So each time the hunter is successful tracking down uh, one of these poor saps, they are able to move the assimilation token uh, forward, and if they're able to reach the star, then they've assimilated the flesh and the DNA of these poor saps, and the aliens will win the game. However, the uh, humans who are not going to defeat the hunter at all, <laughs> they can't do anything to the hunter, actually, or very little, only all they're trying to do is escape, which is represented by this blue counter. And if they're able to move the blue counter to this uh, central star, then the humans have escaped the world and they have won the game collectively. So on each turn, each human player is going to visit one of these um, spaces on the home world. And they do that by playing a card that matches the space where they want to go. So these cards, one, two, three, four, five, match directly, one, two, three, four, five on top. If they wanted to uncover uh, more of the world, they would have to play a card and visit that. They'd have a particular card number five. Take from the reserve one place card that you do not own it added to your hand. So that is how you unlock the rest of the world. And if they wanted to go there, they would have to play that card and try to visit that area. Same thing with this character. Let's say they wanted to go to space three. Uh, then they will just play that card down there. Keep in mind, they can talk the different human players amongst themselves. However, the alien could hear everything. So in practice, it's a lot of silence. <laughs> or, or, or if a, a group is advanced, a lot of misdirection, talking about different options to try to confuse them. But it, the game discourages players from directly planning what they're going to do. So they're going to play and try to figure out which space the alien will uh, try to catch them in. So now it's the second turn and the alien is gonna go. So the alien takes their one hunter chip and they're gonna figure out, hmm, what do they wanna do? Uh, do they wanna try to manipulate their cards? Do they want to try to progress the escape token, which is what number four does? Or do they wanna try to uh, get upgrade card? So the alien makes a guess. Uh, based on how he uh, or she reads the table and says, okay, I think that one of them is going to uh, try to upgrade their card, so I'm going to try to catch them. That is the end of phase two, at least the main part. Then on phase three, everything is revealed. So then, so uh, this character, because the hunter did not go to number three, they'd be able to execute this power, the river, which is play an extra card, but they don't have to worry about that for now. The main part uh, over here, though, is the hunter has guessed correctly and has defeated this character, or at least uh, captured this character for the time being. They lose one will. And yes, you can see the hit points here are very, very low. Will is basically hit points. And they would move forward on the assimilation track. The final phase, the fourth phase, is cleanup. We would discard, remove the tokens. We would remove these cards. They become discarded. Uh, and they have to use a power to retrieve these cards later. So the player's resources are going to dwindle unless they do things to recover them. And we reset and do the same thing next turn. Now there are special powers that each side has available to them. So at any time, a character, if they have too many cards in a discard pile, can do 
uh, what's called resist. They can re remove one of their will to acquire a certain number of cards back into their deck. They can also give up. Give up is basically saying, you know what, I'm screwed. <laughs> Uh, uh, get me back to three uh, to three hearts or a uh, three will, and also get my all my cards back. But progress the assimilation one uh, one forward. So you now, if you're really really pinned and screwed, you can use that first phase to give up and kind of reset yourself. The other resource that the human characters have available to them are these survival cards. So survival cards like this one: sacrifice, discard one place card. No hunt card may be played this turn. What's a hunt card? I'm glad you asked. The alien also has special cards they can do on their turn. The cards have special effects like fierceness, hunters, hunted, caught by the creature, lose one extra will. Let's say you really have pegged somebody against the wall, you're going to want to do that. There's also cards that let, Pete, that let the alien play these extra tokens. They're not as strong as the main uh, things, but they do harry the uh, explorers in some way. So the hunter has resources available to them, but there's this cat and mouse game uh, the different explorers have different resources in terms of the cards and their regular play. And the hunter is able to, uh, is going to try to kind of outthink and in that poker kind of way, outguess what's going to happen. So that was the base game of Not Alone. I'm showing you selections from the first expansion, which is the exploration expansion. It only adds cards, uh, new cards. For the hunt, uh, for the hunter character, new survival cards for the explorers, and alternative locations. So it's more of the same for the most part. Although I find that the exploration cards push the meta a little bit further. So you get a card like this, Ubiquity. In the in the first game, uh, sometimes the cards will give you access to these tokens. A card like Ubiquity will give you both. And there's different cards that kind of push things a little bit further, a little bit more complicated, more tools for the hunter. However, the hunted also have their own tools. So a card like this, Shuttle, a survival card. Play this card when the rescue counter is one space away from victory. The rescuers launch the hunted win the game. I have won with this game card a couple of times. It's very sweet. <laughs> and as you can see, there are uh, there's a lot more text on the, the the exploration cards so they'll push a little bit a little bit a little bit uh in the more complex uh direction as well so then i wanted to show you the example of an alternative so you would pick one of these two threes to play with so this is a basic the the basic game uh example the river play two place cards on your next turn uh the fjord not sure how to pronounce that fjord fjord what are you going to do <laughs> Uh, this one lets you play one card up from your hand and one extra card from your discard pile. So you're still playing two cards, but uh, it's just a little bit of a remix which two cards you place. Another example would be the five card, the rover. Uh, this visiting this card in the base game would let you just get a new card. This one, you reveal a card from your hand and you'll be able to acquire that card. And so this one lets you get extra copies of cards that you may already have. This one is just get more upgraded cards, getting cards, <laughs> uh, which is, uh, again, a remix of what's available in the base game. You decide and you can mix and match and uh, craft your not alone experience to whatever your group wants to do. So that was not alone with the expansion at the table. And I have been playing Not Alone for, I don't know, five years or so. I've played it maybe approaching 100 times, you know, at different game groups. It's so easy to, you know, show to new gamers, show to experienced gamers, between games, before games, at the end of the night, uh, low player count, high player count. I played the, you know, uh, one of the survivors and I've also played the alien. I've, I've played the heck out of this game and it is fun every single time. Oh, and also on a uh, board game arena has a decent working version of not alone as well. So what do I love about this game? It is gamer poker. The reading of what the alien is going to do 
or if you're the alien, what the survivors are going to do is completely and utterly fascinating. How, you know, you might, you know, over multiple plays, you get to know what people kind of tend to do. Some players like to uh, go for those upgrade cards a little bit early. Some players want to, like, get it over with and, you know, move on, uh, try to uh, hurry through the rescue counter. Or, you know, some players, they kind of like, you know, you want to try to corner them into misplaying their hand so that they have too many cards uh, on the discard. That's at the alien side. And on the um, the player side, you, you know, what what's the alien likely to do? Are they aggressive? Uh, what's their assimilation counter at? Are they going to try to go for the gusto or be a little bit more patient? That whole calculus is happening every single turn, and it is awesome and then when you do get upgraded cards that decision space opens up so there is an arc to this game you you know you have more options more things to do and then the alien gets another resource as well uh i didn't show that in the overview but that that last track where the a's occur they get a, an access to a second token that's not as powerful but still harries the survivors and does stuff so the arc to this game is wonderful i have never ever and i've played this game over a hundred times had a game kind of end flat and it's like all right well there you go um i mean I've, I've had blowout wins but the blowout wins have felt satisfying for at least one player N i've never had a game where the players is kind of left you know um disappointed or in in the overall experience maybe they're disappointed in our play but not disappointed into the experience most of the time they'll say okay try that again i want to do that again uh which is a sign of a really really fun game so a criticism of the game, aside from like it's a guessing game, which, you know, poker is a guessing game. So you have the pro same problem with poker, in my opinion. Um, but, uh, taking that guessing thing aside, it's that the survivors, it's theoretically a one versus many game, but the survivors don't really cooperate. You can, you can talk freely, but the alien can hear you. So you're radically disincentivized from working together. You can't do the thing where it says, okay, I'm going to go to the, here, I'm going to go to the, the wreck over there and you're going to go get an upgrade card. Uh, you can't like play off things like that. Um, so uh, some players are like, okay, I'm just like playing a game by myself. That's not really playing, to my, in my opinion, not alone to its fullest capacity. When I said poker, you're not only reading your opponent. You're reading your, your uh, survivors as well. You're keeping track of their resources. You're looking at, oh, well, they have a lot of cards in the discard. They're likely to go either here or here. Or um, they're low, running low on will. So they might need us. They might need something. Let me go ahead and get a survival card, uh, or the the extra player power, and see if I can get them. You know, support them or anything. Uh, they're running low. I'm gonna go ahead and sacrifice myself and go to this obvious spot so that the alien gets me and you know protects the other person. So there might not be active verbal cooperation or like cooperation at the table, but I'm still paying attention to what the other survivors are doing and playing my game off of that, which the fact that you have that double layered reading of, of players is amazing. I love it. This game works at every player count in my opinion. I have played two player versions of this. It's not that good at two players, uh, to be honest. Uh, it, you, need the, you need the more, um, the more like a lot going on. And I've seen it work at seven. You would think that you know the you know the aliens capturing somebody every single turn but that's actually not that wonderful because spreading out all of that damage is to the is not to the aliens benefit the alien really um gets to the point where they want to kind of hunt a certain person and then the game changes at a higher play account now it's all about protecting that person that person ducking and weaving and the other players are doing their thing at a higher player kind of experience that it is lovely so three to seven is like my range for it which is a huge range any any gamer who knows you know a game with a huge player count there's usually like kind of a window that it's good this one i feel is good at a at a pretty big uh, player count three to seven which is great the expansion mm. I don't play with the expansion that much. I don't need to. I get enough juice out of the basic game. I don't really, and I don't play it like many, many times in a row. If you're a player that plays as many, many times in a row, then you might want to change things up. I play it once, put it away. It'll be a couple of weeks. I play it with different groups. So when I'm playing with different groups, I don't like mixing in the expansion. So if you're a player that plays it with the same group over and over again, the expansion might be worth it. I think the expansion worth it because, not because of the, the different places, but the alternate hunt cards and survivor cards some of them are fun like i like the one i showed you in the over 
review where it's like an instant win, but one uh, one space before it gets to the track. It, it does some like other neat stuff like that. I have I have to get a kick out of uh, when things like that happen at the table. I adore this game. No question. Seal of excellence. Nine out of ten. I, I could even go even higher. Um, you know, there's some things that this game could be do a little bit better on the margins, maybe a little bit more opportunity to cooperate. Might have been a good thing, might have taken it even higher for me, or maybe like just a variant or something. But as it is right now, I play this game all the time. I don't foresee a circumstance where I'm getting rid of this game. If someone wants to lay it down, strangers, friends, I'm in, I'm playing, not alone is an amazing one verse many heads up poker style gamer adventure check it out if you like what you heard i review of uh, one verse many games and cooperative games if you're cooperating on the table you have a welcome place on my channel shelf stories and in addition i also run playthroughs on the one-stop co-op shop i specialize in cooperative games love them anytime there's cooperation in a game whether it's semi cop or one verse many i'm all over it so i invite you to come check out my channel and also the one-stop co-op shop as well this is jason reminding you if you could change your mind you could change the world so until next time later everybody